alam nyo po, ganito pala kapag tumatanda. Kasi uh, mas na-appreciate talaga natin yung ating mga mothers. All right. Siguro hindi lang yung mothers natin, pero kahit yung ibang mga mothers. Kaya nga sabi nila, 'di ba? Yung pag-ibig ng Panginoon, nilagay niya na isang uh, meron siyang binigay na isang token ng pag-ibig niya na yon. Na if you want a specimen of the love of God, you just have to look at the heart of a mother. Because a mother is just simply selfless. Yung, yung prayer ni Brother Sam. A mother is just simply yung uh, di, ba, di ba nga, isusubo na lang ng mother, ibibigay pa niya sa anak niya eh. Di po ba? Ganun ang mother eh, di ba? Huwag na siya, makalimutan na siya, hindi na siya yung mahalaga. Pwede siyang mamatay para sa mga anak niya. And that's the example of the unconditional love of God. And I hope and pray that today we will truly cherish and honor if your mothers are still alive it matters a lot that you greet them all right it matters a lot that you show them your appreciation and how much you value them kasi pag wala na po yung mothers po natin mahirap nang ipakita po iyon pero habang buhay pa sila pwede pa po nating ipadama yung pag-ibig natin at appreciation natin para sa kanila So, purihin ang Panginoon. Sana every Sunday, Mother's Day. O, oh, di ba? <laughs> Pwede naman po eh. Di ba? Hindi kinakailangan once a year. Tama po ba, mothers? Hindi kinakailangan once a year lang yung Mother's Day. Pwede kasi na araw-araw po ay si Lord nagpapasalamat tayo sa Kanya para po sa malaking biyaya na binigay niya through our moms. Brethren, today, itutuloy natin po ang atin pong Aralin patungkol po sa Book of James. And could you please all rise again? Tumayo po tayo at basahin natin ang text na atin pong pag-aaralan ngayong umaga. The message today is entitled, The Cure to Worldliness from James chapter 4 verses 4 to 10. So let's read all together. But we will read, parin po yung verses one to four because it's the one to three because it's the background. So let's read it all together. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. Tayo po ay manalangin, panandalian. Father God, our loving God and heavenly God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We bless and praise your most holy name for truly, Lord, you are great and mighty. Truly, Lord, we magnify your love. We magnify Lord Jesus, your beauty. We magnify, O oh Lord, Your grace, your mercy in our lives. Salamat po, Panginoon, for our salvation. We continue to thank you for your grace that always shows us the path, shows us the light. Lord, we commit to you our hearing of your word. Please bless, O Lord God, the message today. We pray, Father God, that you will use this word to cleanse, to purify, Lord God, and use it, Lord Jesus, 
that your church, Lord, will indeed be pleasing in your eyes. That your church, O Lord God, will remain to be blessed. And this blessing, O God, brings honor and glory to you. Salamat po, Panginoon. We commit all things to you, Father God. In Jesus' sweet and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Salamat po. Makakaupo na po tayo. Our topic today, brethren, has something to do with worldliness. Okay? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng worldliness? Sa Tagalog, ito po ay pagiging makamundo. Okay? Pagiging makamundo. Pagiging worldly. Nakita natin po last week sa atin pong paksa na isang dahilan o ang pinakadahilan kung bakit meron pong away-away, fights and quarrels sa tao, kahit sa church, ito ay nagmumula po sa atin pong mga evil desires. Okay? At yung evil desires po na yun, pag atin pong susumahin, ang evil desires po na ito ay nagmumula sa sin ng worldliness. Okay? Kaya po nakita natin na kapag ang puso natin ay merong worldliness, hindi lamang po ito nagkikreate ng conflict sa atin pong mga kapwa, ito ay nagkikreate din ng conflict unang una sa lahat sa Diyos. When we have worldliness, when we have these evil desires in our hearts, it is rebellion against the Lord. Alam nyo po, Madaling maspat yung worldliness pag hindi pa po kristyano ang isang tao. Kasi lahat naman tayo, di po ba? Siguro yung life mo noon, nung hindi ka pa na kay Lord, puro party, di ba? Inom, bisyo, ano po, materialism, utang, ano po. Ito lahat, madaling maspat kapag hindi pa tayo Christian, tayo worldly po tayo. Pero alam nyo po, I think... Worldliness is a tricky thing to identify. Mahirap siyang maspot o ma-identify kapag Christian sa tayo. Kasi pag Christian sa tayo, we do things to honor the Lord. We do activities to praise the Lord. Okay? So, nandoon po yung outward things, activities na ginagawa natin pa para i-worship si Lord. All right? So, ibig sabihin, How are we going to identify kung now that we're already believers, how are we going to identify kung tayo po ba ay nagiging worldly? Alright? Paano natin ma-identify? Kasi pag hindi Christian, madaling ma-identify eh. Kasi hindi niya, wala siyang relationship kay Lord eh. He just continues dun sa kanyang ginagawa na mali. Pero pag Christian na, ah, ano po eh, di ba? Pwedeng maging double yung buhay natin. Alright, maging doble yung buhay natin. We lead a double life na sa, sa paglinggo, nagwo-worship kay Lord, nagbabasa tayo ng Bible. Pero kapag pang-araw-araw, nadi-distinguish ba natin pa rin na yung buhay natin ay hindi na dapat kapareho ng sa mundo pong ito. Okay? Naalala ko si Thomas Watson, yung Puritan. Sabi niya, yung tubig daw sa karagatan It's like the world, all right? It's useful for the sailing of the ship, but it is dangerous when that water gets into the ship, all right? So the water is useful for sailing for the ship, but it is dangerous when the water gets into the ship. So that's also the danger with the world. We are in the world. But it is dangerous when the world is already into our hearts. Okay? So tingnan po natin yung atin pong discussion today. The first is, how does God see worldliness? Alright? There are three things. It is spiritual adultery. It is being enemies with God. And worldliness feeds our pride. Second is how the world pales in comparison to the grace of God. And the third is how do we cure our worldliness. Under that is humility, submission, and drawing near to God. 
Tama po ba? Okay. In faith, confession, and repentance. May conclusion pa po iyan. Mamaya na lang natin titingnan. So let's look at the first point, which is how God sees worldliness. All right? How does God see worldliness? James chapter 4 again. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? I saw this definition of what worldliness is. I'll share it with you. Worldliness is simply living, it is living the way the world says to live instead of the way God says to live. All right? Worldliness is simply living the way the world says to live instead of the way God says to live. The world says you deserve to be happy. You deserve to have anything you want to have. Tama po? Yan ang mundo. No matter what anyone else has said, you don't have to listen to those in authority. You don't have to abide by rules. You don't like the, you don't have to abide by rules that you don't like or obey anyone you don't want to obey. If it feels good, do it. If you want it, get it. No matter what the long-term consequences are. It's your life. So live it any way you want to live it. Yan po ang living the world the way the world says that we should live. It's the world telling us, you can do what you want to do. Oh, tama po? Ganun ang mundo. Ba't mo kailangang isipin yung sasabihin ng mga tao o ng authorities? Gawin mo yung gusto mo. Alright? Kung anong makakapagpasaya sa'yo, okay? Meron akong isang nakita sa internet eh. Sabi nung isang person, magpakasaya ka hanggang gusto mo. Okay? Okay bang advice yun? Magpasay, magpakasaya ka hanggang gusto mo. Parang hindi po, di ba? <laughs> Parang delikado yun eh. Kung yun ang sasabihin mo, di ba? Kasi paano kung gusto mong lunurin ang sarili mo sa alcohol, kunyari. Lunurin ang sarili mo sa drugs. Lunurin ang sarili mo sa pagpapakasasa. And it destroys you. So, yun, 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 world po yun. Ano po? Yun ang world. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, kahit na tayo mga Kristiyano, lahat po tayo prone sa temptation ng worldliness. Okay? Wala pong exempted. Wala pong exempted. Okay? Kasama po ako doon. Kasama doon ng mga ministers of God, pastors, missionaries, everyone. Everyone is prone to the temptation of worldliness. Siguro hindi natin i-consider yung ating mga sarili na worldly. Meron ba sa inyong sasabihin niyo siguro, hindi ako worldly? Siguro yung iba, pero tapos na ako dyan. Hindi ko nasasabihin yung sarili ko na worldly. Alam niyo po, be careful when you say that because wala pong exempted sa temptation ng worldliness. Be careful not to think that you're strong lest you fall. Remember? So, ito po ang isang I'd like to share to you, no? Sometimes, pag ang buhay po natin ay banayad, wala masyadong alon, wala masyadong ma mga problema, okay? Siguro nasa stage kayo ngayon ng buhay ninyo na okay naman pag tinanong ka, kumusta ka? Okay lang. Okay lang, walang major thing na nangyayari, walang major trial na nangyayari. Relax la ako, tutuusin. Pero alam nyo po, ito po yung problem with worldliness. When life is worry-free, trial-free, that's the time we slowly by slowly put our guards down. Okay? Yung dating init sa Panginoon, unti-unti, nawawala po yun. Kasi po, banayad yung buhay. And then, for all you know it, okay, for all you know that worldliness is right there at your doorstep, right there at your doorstep, tempting you, and little by little, you can succumb. Kaya po, alam nyo po, it's really a blessing when we are having trials in life. 
because it puts us on our toes. So, the worldliness that we are looking at here, ano ang tingin ng Panginoon dito? Unang-una po, worldliness is actually a form of adultery. All right? And it's called a spiritual adultery. Ano po ba ang adultery? Sa Tagalog, ang ibig sabihin ng adultery ay pangangalunya o pakikiapid. Tama po? Adultery is when you look to another man or woman for the fulfillment of your desires. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng adultery. Kapag titingin ka sa ibang lalaki o babae na hindi mo asawa at siya sa kanya mo kukunin ang iyong mga pagnanasa. Ganon din po mga kapatid ang ibig sabihin ng spiritual adultery. When we look to anywhere else other than God for the fulfillment of our desires, then we are committing spiritual adultery. Okay? Yung mga Jewish Christians, sa kanila po, itong pagkakatawag ni James sa kanila na adulterous people, that is not something rare to them or uh, unheard of. Kasi sa Old Testament, ang relationship ni Yahweh sa Israel ay relationship na iniyahambing sa mag-asawang lalaki at babae. So si God yung husband, yung Israel, siya yung wife. At kapag nag idolatry nagre-rebel yung Israel, ito yung sinasabi ng mga propeta sa kanila. They're committing spiritual adultery. Apply pa rin po ito sa atin. Because Christians are married to Jesus Christ. And because we're married to Jesus Christ, we need to be faithful to Jesus Christ. Sabi dito po sa verse 5, or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? Meron ba sa inyo ditong seloso o selosa na asawa? Okay. No, siguro magtatasa ko na kamay, numero uno na ako doon, di ba? Pero alam nyo po, ang jealousy sa mag-asawa, expected yun eh. Bakit po? Walang asawa na okay lang sa kanya na ang kanyang husband o kanyang wife ay merong gusto sa iba. Alright? So, bakit po? Kasi kahit po si God, He is a jealous God. Kahit si God, He is a jealous God. Exodus chapter 20, He is a jealous God. Siya po ay selosin ang Diyos po natin. Kaya sabi rito sa verse 5, Scripture says without reason that He jealously longs for the spirit He has caused to dwell in us. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Exodus 20 verse 5. So ibig sabihin nito ang Diyos, yung nilagay niya sa ating spirit, nais ng Panginoon na siya yung ating gustuhin. Lapitan, mahalin, naisin dahil yun ang dahilan ba't niya po tayo nilikha. The Holy Spirit is grieved when we are worldly. God wants all of us, just as a husband would want his wife to want no one else but him, and a wife would want her husband to want no one else but her, same thing with God. God wants his children, his bride, to want no one else but him. So kapag tayo po ay nagko-commit ng sin of worldliness, instead of looking at God and saying, Lord, you're enough. Lord, you satisfy. Worldliness is saying to the world, I want you, world. I want you, world. God's not enough. I am attracted to you, world. Okay? Kasi di ba ganyan ng adultery? Okay? May nakita kang ibang babae. Parang mas maganda tong babae na to. but di ba siya yung napangasawa ko instead na yung wife ko? Ang ibig sabihin po nun, you start to think, you start to imagine. I want this woman. I'm no longer satisfied by my wife. And that's a spiritual adultery when we say, Lord, I'm thankful you're my God, 
But world, I'm attracted to you. You satisfy my deepest attractions. Brethren, that's worldliness. Okay? That's worldliness. The second is this. Worldliness is being enemies with God. Kala natin yung salitang worldliness o itong sin na ito ay siguro something na harmless or maybe subtle or maybe something that doesn't really harm our relationship with God. Okay? Pero sabi po rito sa James 4, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Let me share with you, sabi po ng isang Bible scholar, ang pangalan niya ay si Craig Blumberg. Yung idea ng friendship noon at saka ngayon, magkaiba. Sabi ni Blumberg, friendship in antiquity was usually taken far more seriously than in today's Western world. Kasi casual nga tayo, individualistic yung society natin. In antiquity, friendship is a lifelong pact between people with shared values and loyalties. Friendship in James's day indicated identification and relationship with something or someone. So to be friends with the world means to identify with its standards and priorities. So yun palang ibig sabihin ng friendship. Friendship with the world is identification. It is having an identification and a relationship. Ang ipik sabihin po nito, when you want to be identified to, with the world, it means you want to belong to the world, with the world. You want to be accepted by the world. You want to be treated by the world as someone important, successful, or cool. Kaya po, yung worldliness, it's more than just the external things. It is in the heart. It's in our attitudes. Okay? It is in our motives. It is when we want the world to think good of us. That's worldliness. Brethren, there is no way we can grow in our intimate fellowship with the Lord when our hearts are set on being friends with the world. Kasi po, can an adulterous wife be madly in love with her husband and at the same time be in an illicit affair with a lover? Same with our relationship with God. We are deceiving ourselves when we say we are in love with Jesus, but we have a secret affair with the world. Okay? Will a husband be happy when his wife is having an illicit affair with another man, and usually secret yun, di po ba? So what do you think is God's reaction when a believer becomes enamored with the world or attracted with the world, all right? And starts to live the way the world tells him or her to live, okay? So, of course, ano ba yung mga values ng world? Ang mga values ng world is puro yan. Alam mo na, ito'y values ng world kasi ito ay puro po sa pansarili at hindi para sa glory ni Lord. Now, James says that when we choose to be friends with the world, okay, so isipin mo, wala naman siguro para naman sa evangelism. Be friends with the world. Hindi po eh. Okay? Kailangan po talaga meron pong distinction yung buhay po natin. Alam nyo po kung ano daw po ang what, what, what will happen? When we make friends with the world, we are making ourselves enemies. Enemies of God. Okay? We are making ourselves enemies of God. Kalaban na natin ang Diyos. Okay? Kinakalaban natin ang Diyos. O kalaban na natin ang Diyos. Pag niisip po natin, di po ba? Pero Lord, di ba sabi mo sa Romans chapter 8, if God is for us, who can be against us? Di ba Lord, sabi mo. So, when you look at Romans 8, at itong sinasabi sa James chapter 4, paano mo siya i-reconcile? E samantalang God is for us. And at the same time, James 4 says that we will become enemies of God. 
When we are friends with the world, we are enemies with God. In the end, if a Christian will persist in being friends with the world, he or she needs to examine his or her heart if he or she is truly God's child. The third thing about worldliness is that worldliness feeds our pride. In verse 6, it says, But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. It says here, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. When we are worldly, we are proud. Okay? When we are worldly, we are proud. Kasi po, bakit? Why do people or Christians become friends with the world? Like example, itong church po ng James, na tinulatan po ni James. Brethren, we strike a friendship with the world. You know why? Because the world satisfies pride. Okay? The world satisfies pride. And you know what? God will never do anything to satisfy pride. He will never do anything to satisfy pride. But the world will do everything to satisfy our pride. So that's what makes worldliness very subtle. It's a temptation that we can all fall into because it deals with the satisfaction of ourselves. Brethren, pride is the sin, the number one sin of Satan. Pride is one of Satan's weapons, therefore, to attack the church, to attack God. Pride was behind the promise of Satan to Eve when Satan told Eve, magiging kapareho mo ang Diyos. Magiging magaling ka. Magiging matalino ka. Nakakatakot po, hindi po ba mga kapatid ang pride? No? Kasi kas, ano yan eh, yan ang, yan ang downfall ni Satanas eh. Satan was the most beautiful angel. He was the most Magnificent angel. Nagwo-worship lead pa siya. Pero umakit sa ulo ni Satan. Yung kanyang beauty. Okay? Umakit sa ulo niya. And he wanted now the adoration that was given to God to be also given to him. Okay? Kaya po, yun yung ibig sabihin ng pride. Okay? We become worldly because we want to be satisfied with our pride. But of course, we all know that man has nothing to be proud of in himself. Romans 7, 18, there dwells no good thing in us. God wants us to depend on his grace while the devil wants us to depend on ourselves. Satan enjoys inflating our ego. Okay? Satan enjoys inflating, flattering us and encouraging a person to do it his way or her way. Okay? That is why a worldly person is in love with himself or herself. And he is in love or she is in love with the pleasures of the world. Because at the end of the day, that's where he or she draws his or her value. That's where he or she draws yung pong kanyang, ano po, yung pong kanyang identity. I feel good about myself because of the things that I draw from the world. This, of course, will make a person's heart indifferent to God and to the world. Okay? Kasi ang way ng Diyos, self-denial po eh. Ang way ng Diyos, death to self, that I, that He will become, He will become, He will increase and that I will increase, decrease. He will become greater and I will become less. Yun po ang way ng, Christ, ng Christianity, ng gospel eh. As a result, James is saying, God is opposed to the proud. So consistent shall you being enemies of God. Brothers and sisters, 
there could be no blessing of God in being worldly because there could be no blessing of God in being proud. All right? So again, a proud person is a worldly person. Now let's look, look at the second point today. How the world pales in comparison to grace. Sabi po sa verse 6, But He gives us more grace. Alright? But He gives us more grace. Ito naman yung balance nung pagiging mga kalaban ng Diyos, pagiging mga adulterers, yung pong, yun pong napaka-sakit na description na yun ni James. Nais ni James na yung mga tao po ay bumalik sa Panginoon. Nais po ni James na ang mga tao po ay makita nila na hindi pa huli ang lahat. He gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. While God is jealous and angered by worldliness, it says in verse 6, but he gives us more grace. It means that while God is angered by worldliness, but God would still like to offer us grace so that we will repent and that we will be restored in our relationship with him. Since God is a loving and compassionate husband, all right, ang Diyos ay maawain, mapagmahal, siya po ay mahabagin, tulad po ng isang asawang lalaki, kapareho po ng kwento ni Hosea, yung kanyang asawa na si Gomer ay naging isang palaboy, naging prostitute, Pero God wanted to describe yung love na unconditional ng Diyos na gusto niyang patawarin. Gusto niyang ibalik, gusto niyang i-restore na kahit po naging unfaithful po ang Israel sa kanya. Nais po niyang patawarin sila, nais niya pong i-restore sila sa kanya pong pag-ibig, sa kanyang relationship. Yun po mga kapatid ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Kaya sabi dyan, He gives us more grace. He gives us more grace. Since God is a loving and compassionate husband, He seeks our repentance because He wants to forgive. Amen? Ano po ba yung grace ng Diyos? In chapter 1 of, v of James verse 17, the grace of God are those good and perfect gifts of the Lord. Alright? What else? The grace of God is the strength of the Lord, the inner resources of the Lord from the empowering of the Spirit of the Lord that will enable us to overcome the negative influences of the world. Alright? That's why it says, but He gives us more grace. What is saying here is that by our own power and strength, our tendency as sinners is always to come after the world. But God gives us grace. He gives us grace so that we will resist the world. He gives us grace so that He will give us the power, the enabling. He will give us the grace of His love to satisfy us so that hindi na po tayo lilingon sa kaliwa at sa kanan. If we only had those first two points or three points that we read, Madidepress tayo, di po ba? We would probably say, Lord, hindi ko kayang i-resist yung, yung temptation ng world. Kasi malakas yung drive ko to prove myself. Okay? Hindi ko ma-resist yung temptation ng world. Kasi Lord, alam ko, meron akong ibubugay. Meron akong husay o galing. At gusto kong i-prove. I, I can make a name for myself. Grabe po ang world, di po ba? Yun ang sasabihin ng world sa puso natin. Ano po? And brethren, without the Lord, without the grace of the Lord, we will fall into worldliness. Okay? We will fall into worldliness because we will succumb to that temptation of pride. That is why important yung verse 6, but He gives us grace. He gives us grace. Of course, that grace of the Lord the, yung pinaka-grace ng Panginoon 
is when he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. God raised Jesus from the dead, which means that we will be given by God the power, okay, the power to resist the temptations of the world because of Jesus, because Jesus has defeated that sin, that power of sin. The grace of God means that the Lord will provide what we lack. He will provide the strength to persevere so that when we fall into worldliness, we get up, we bring ourselves to the Lord in repentance, and we continue again. Now, let's go back. Sabi kasi dito, di po ba? But he shows favor to the humble. Alam niyo po kung anong gusto ng kaaway? Do you know what Satan wants to happen? He wants us, he wants to keep us from humbling ourselves. All right? He wants to keep us from humbling ourselves so that we don't experience the saving grace of God. Okay? On the other hand, God wants us to humble ourselves because a humble spirit is rewarded by God's unmerited and endless favor. Do not be deceived by Satan and by the world. Satan wants us to be proud, but God wants us to humble so that God could bless us, so that God could restore us to his favor and he could show us his mercy and power. Kaya po itong second point natin is that the world will always pale in comparison to the grace of God. Okay? God is a generous provider of all that His children need. Amen po? Yung world magpapangako ng kung ano-ano, tapos pagkatapos nun, sira ang buhay natin. Mga ngako ng magagandang bagay, mga ngako ng mga ganito, but at the end of it, wasak yung puso natin. And of course, the worst is it damns our souls. I like so much how Craig Blomberg puts it. Sabi niya, instead of wanting the things of the world, we should remember that God gives the gifts that are truly worth having. Amen? Amen po. Brothers and sisters, is this world drying you up? Okay, is this world drying you up? Remember the grace of the Lord. Remember the goodness of the Lord. That the gifts of the Lord are, of the Lord are the ones that are truly worth having. Amen. They are the ones truly worth having. Yung mga bagay ng mundong ito, it's just short and temporal. Ano po? Saglit. Pero yung ibinibigay ng Diyos sa atin na kapayapaan, binibigay niya sa atin na pag-ibig, yung binibigay niya po sa atin na glory, Christ in us, the hope of glory, hindi mo mabibili yun sa tindahan. Hindi mo siya mabibili sa SM. <laughs> hindi mo siya mabibili, hindi mo siya kayang swelduhin sa kahit anong kumpanya. The gifts of the Lord are the gifts that are truly worth having. What is the cure for worldliness? Verse 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. The first cure to worldliness. Pasensya na po, mali pala yung, yung outline ko kanina. The first cure to worldliness is actually submission to God. Okay? It's actually submission to God. Sabi sa verse 7, Submit yourselves then to God. Alright? Submit yourselves then to God. Alam niyo po kung ano ibig sabihin po ng pagsasubmit sa Diyos? Submit means surrender. 
It means a total surrender to God. It means a total surrender to God. All right? Lord, pero ganito, ganito, Panginoon, gusto ko to. Pero Panginoon, paano kung ganito, Lord? Paano kung, ano, marami po tayong worries, marami tayong fears. All right? Marami po tayong mga, mga, mga takot. Lord, baka pag sinurrender ko, pahirapan niyo po yung buhay ko. Lord, baka pag nagsurrender ako, biglang dumagsa yung mga ano, biglang dumagsa yung aking mga trials. Hindi po yun faith. Okay? Hindi yun faith. Di ba nakakatakot mag-surrender sa Lord? Kasi pag nag-surrender, baka, di ba, iniisip natin, no? Uh, maghirap tayo eh. Pero brothers and sisters, that's, that's not faith eh. When God wants us to surrender, He wants us to surrender with faith in our hearts, believing that He is a good God. That His design and His intent for us, His purpose for us is always for our good. It's to give us a future. It's to give us a hope. It's to prosper us and not to harm us. That is why, Lord, yung iba po sa atin, marami nang nasubok eh, di ba? May kilala po ako sa ating congregation na Marami na siyang ginawa sa buhay niya. Marami na siyang pinasok na relasyon. Marami na siyang inexperimento. Ano po? Nakakatuwa kapag nakakarinig ka ng taong kristyanong ganun na lang yung kanyang kabasagan. Kasi ang dami niya ng tindray, ang dami niyang sinubukan at na-realize niyang lagi siyang palpak. <laughs> Laging palpak yung kanyang mga diskarte. Kaya dumating yung panahon na Lord, give up na ako. Hands Hands, Lord, hands down na ako. Surrender na ako, Panginoon. Kayo na ang manguna. Brothers and sisters, we do not want to reach a point wherein we've made a lot of messes in our lives, a lot of wrong decisions in our lives, and that's the only time we'll surrender. Kasi kumbaga, dami ng damage. Ba't iintayin pa natin na maraming damage bago tayo mag-surrender sa will ni Lord? Ang iba po sa atin, meron tayong worries and fears Paano na pagtanda ko? Paano na? Pag di na ako, hindi ko na kaya mag-work. Okay? Paano na? Yung security ng buhay ko. Brothers and sisters, when we have these insecurities, our tendency is to do things our way when even if we know that God is unpleased with it. Submit means to surrender and obey. It is a military term that means to get into your proper rank. It is unconditional surrender. And unconditional surrender is the only way to cure the sin of worldliness. Amen po? It's the only way to cure. Kasi pag surrender yung puso natin sa Panginoon, mga kapatid, meron ka man ng isang bagay o wala. Pero dahil nagtitiwala ka sa Panginoon at nakasurrender ang iyong buhay sa Panginoon, ang hope mo, ang trust mo, ang pag-asa mo ay hindi doon sa circumstances, hindi doon sa provisions ng world, hindi doon sa pupwedeng ibigay ng iyong mga kamay para sa iyo. Ang hope mo ay ang pag-ibig ng Diyos na siyang mga ngalaga sa iyong buhay at sa yung kinabukasan. Amen po. Kaya po pag sinabi nating Lord, I will surrender to you. It will cure our worldliness. It will cure our worldliness because we are now committing ourselves wholeheartedly to the Lord and allowing him to do what he pleases. To do what he what what he wants with us. We are allowing him to bless us as he as He wills it, as He is glorified by it. He wants to bless us and to restore us for His name's sake. The reason why there are worldly believers is because worldly believers have not totally surrendered themselves to God. All right? The reason why there are worldly believers is because they have not totally surrendered themselves to God by faith. But if we want to be cured, we must surrender everything to the Lord. We must give up now what God is telling us to give up. Amen? 
First John chapter 2. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. There are three characteristics of the world, of worldliness. There is the lust of the flesh. It refers to passions. Ito po yun, the lust of the flesh. Tatlong letter P ito eh. Lust of the flesh, ito yung mga desires ng ating pagiging tao. There's sex, there's food, there's rest. Rest can become laziness. Food can become gluttony. Ano po? Desire for sex can become immorality. And so and so forth. No? So these are desires na nasa flesh but they become lusts. Alright? They become passions. What about the lust of the eyes? The lust of the eyes are the lustful desire for earthly, next letter P, possessions. Possessions. Okay? Possessions mean, ito yung mga, ano po, we like the finer things in life. We have a, an attraction, all right? An attraction for the nice things in the world. Possessions. And the last letter P is position. Position. The boastful pride of life. Our ambition for position, for honor, for glory. So the world will try to give us and satisfy these things. But God is asking, give up your passions, give up your possessions, give up your lust for position. In verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Mapapansin niyo po, ang worldliness, kakabit nito ang demonyo. Okay po? Kakabit po nito si Satanas. Take note that a person is siding with the devil when a person is friends with the world. The way to resist the devil, you know how? Sabi ng Bible, it is to obey God. Okay? It is to obey God. When we submit to God and we say, Lord, let it be your way and not my way, we are resisting the devil. Alam niyo po, wala po tayong kalakasan against the devil. We're human beings. We don't have that supernatural power to resist the devil on our own because we're sinners. We need the grace, the power of the Lord. And to resist the devil, the Lord gives us the power. And He gives us the power when we obey the Lord by faith. And you know what? Ang sabi ng Bible, He will flee from you. Are you suffering right now from intense temptation? to commit sexual sin. Are you suffering right now? Suffering, quote-unquote, from an intense temptation to be greedy, to be materialistic. Okay? Are you suffering right now from this temptation to vie for position? Di ka makatulog sa gabi kasi lagi mong iniisip yung promotion. Di ka makatulog sa gabi kasi lagi mong iniisip position, position, position. Okay, laging yun ang issue, laging yun ang nakakapagpagabagag pagabagag sa iyo. Ano po? Iyon ang laging nakaka ano po, laman ng ating puso. Kailan ko ba makukuha yung posisyon na yun? Resist and obey and the devil will flee from you. You see, Satan is not that powerful of a figure who cannot be defeat, defeated. Ang atin pong Panginoong Hesus Nagtagumpay po siya. He has won the victory. And when we submit to Jesus Christ, we receive the power of Jesus Christ and we will be victorious against Satan and against the temptation to worldliness. The second cure to worldliness is to draw near to the Lord. Alright? It is to draw near to the Lord. The first is submit and the second is to draw near to the Lord. When we draw near to the Lord, sa Tagalog, tayo po ay lalapit sa Panginoon. Okay? Alam niyo po, pag inisip mo, bakit kailangan pa sabihin, di ba? 
common sense naman yun. Pag may problema ka, lalapit ka kay Lord, di ba? Pero hindi po eh. Kailangang ituro sa atin at ipaalala sa atin maya't maya at tayo po'y lumapit sa Panginoon. Bakit po? Kasi yung sarili natin, gagawin ang kaya sa sariling lakas. Pero po, ang utos ng Diyos, anak, lumapit ka! Anak, lumapit ka! Alam niyo po, hindi dahil nagsisimba, hindi dahil nagmi-ministry, ibig sabihin, lumalapit sa Diyos, ha? Magkaiba yun. Kasi lahat yun, external, eh. Pero yung paglapit sa Diyos, ito ay isang bagay na ginagawa po natin ng sikreto. Ito ay ginagawa po natin ng personal sa loob ng ating mga puso dahil lumalapit sa Panginoon ng merong kapagpapakumbaba, ng meron pong kabasagan, at lumalapit tayo sa Panginoon upang hingin ang kanya pong biyaya. Lumapit ka na ba sa Panginoon? Siguro nahihirapan ka ngayon dun sa mga tukso mo, pero lumapit ka na ba sa Panginoon? In our struggle against sin and Satan, brethren, we don't stand alone when we come in prayer to God because the promise of God is this, come near to God and He will what? He will come near to you. Amen? He will come near to you. That's the promise of the Lord. Draw near to God in faith. The next is draw near to God in confession. Okay? In confession. Alam nyo, hindi po ito madaling gawin, yung confession. Kasi pag kinoconfess, ipig sabihin po, ating inaamin na may struggle tayo sa sin ng worldliness. Inaamin natin yung tatlong peace kahit alin man doon, it could be passion, okay? Possession, it could be position. But when we are confessing, it is humbly admitting we need the Lord. Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. How do we wash our hands and purify our hearts? You will notice that spiritual adultery is a sin that makes us dirty. Spiritual adultery is a sin that makes us dirty. Psalm 23, 3 and 4, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Again, how do we have clean hands and a pure heart? The way to deal with the sin of worldliness in our lives is by confessing to God what our hands have committed, referring to actions. Referring to actions. Okay? Meron ba tayong actions? And how our hearts and minds have been divided between the Lord and the world. Kaya po, wash your hands. Referring to actions. Purify your hearts. Referring to our hearts, our attitudes, our minds. In pinangako ng Diyos po sa atin sa 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that God will be faithful. He will be just to forgive. Amen? To forgive and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness when we confess our sins to Him. Kanantanan natin kanina yung the blood of the Lamb, di po ba? Ang dugo ni Kristo Ito po ang siyang naghuhugas ng ating mga kasalanan. The last is, we are to draw near to God in genuine sorrow. Okay? We are to draw near to God in genuine sorrow. Grieve, mourn, wail, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Dito po, si Propetang James or Santiago sa Tagalog ay parang Old Testament na propeta who calls the people to repentance by having them grieve over their sins and so to speak, sit in sackcloth and ashes. Kasi po, sa Old Testament, kapag ang tao ng Diyos, ang bayan ng Diyos ay nagsisisi sa kanilang mga kasalanan, hindi tinatanggal nila yung magagandang nilang damit. Nagsusuot sila ng sako. Tapos kanila pong binubuhusan ng ashes yung kanilang mga ulo kasi sila po ay nag sa kanilang ginawang kasalanan sa Diyos. Mga kapatid, alam nyo po, ang problem today ng atin pong world, ng ating culture, okay, 
we are now treating sin too lightly. We are now treating sin too lightly. Kaya itong grieve, mourn, wail, change your laughter into, in, into mourning. Sa Bible mo lang mababasa yan. Ano po? Sa scriptures mo lang mababasa yan. Kasi ang world, lagi kang itetempt na maging masaya, maging frivolous, okay? Laging pumarty, laging may ganap, laging ano po? Our problem today is that we now treat sin too lightly. Manood kayo ng mga teleserye. Ang common theme sa mga teleserye, adultery. Okay? Manood po kayo ng mga pelikula. Yung sex, fornications, sa isang, sa dalawang single adults, common yun. There is no more shame in committing sin. If we want to be cured of worldliness, we must go back to the holiness of God and look at our sins in light of God's holiness, not in light of what our friends think. Siguro sa mga friends, nakakakilig. Diba? Siguro sa mga friends, nakakatuwa ka naman. Ano po? Pero mga kapatid, it's not how our friends think of our sins. It's looking at our sins in light of the holiness of God. We must realize the grievous nature of our sins. We ought to be deeply affected when we realize just how far we've strayed away from God. What are the promises of God when we genuinely repent in sorrow? Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2. These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. Alam mo kapatid, hindi naman hinihingi ng Diyos na baguhin mo ang sarili mo sa sarili mong lakas. Ang hinihingi ng Diyos, lumapit ka sa Kanya. Hingin mo siya ang Kanyang presensya sa iyong buhay. Hingin mo ang kanyang biyaya sa iyong sa iyong buhay. I-offer mo ang iyong sarili at sumunod ka sa Panginoon. Psalm 34 verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves. Amen po. And saves those who are crushed. In spirit. Amen? He saves those who are crushed in spirit. There is a way out, brothers and sisters, out of sin. There is a way out of worldliness because God saves, God restores the repentant. The conclusion of James in this section is this, verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up okay humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up when we humble ourselves before the Lord meaning we submit surrender confess repent of our worldliness the Lord promises that he himself will lift us up in due time okay the Lord himself promises that he himself will lift us up. Another word, he will exalt us in due time. Okay? Siguro sa tingin ng mundo, mukha kang basahan. Diba? Sa tingin ng mundo, mukha kang ewan. Nakakaawa ka naman. Alright? Hindi po yun ang mahalaga, mga kapatid. Amen po. Hindi po yun ang mahalaga. Ang mahalaga po that we humble ourselves before the Lord because in due time, He will be the one to exalt us. Brethren, God promises a complete restoration of His relationship with us and also His plans for our lives. Kung tayo po ay nastray away sa worldliness, nastray away tayo sa plano ng Panginoon, nalayo tayo dun sa, 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 sa naisin ng Panginoon, but God promises a complete restoration of His relationship with us and His plan for our lives when we humble ourselves. Matthew 23, verse 12. 
For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Another, no, inulit na naman yung same sinabi ni James dito sa First Peter, that he may lift you up in due time. Mga kapatid, ito ay hindi pangako ng kung sino lang. Ito ay pangako ng Diyos sa kalangitan na may gawa ng langit at ng lupa na sino mang nagpapakumbaba sa Panginoon, siya ang magtataas sa taong yaon. Siya ang magtataas sa iyo, kapatid, kapag ikaw ay tunay na nagpakumbaba sa Panginoon at iyong sinuko ang iyong buhay sa Panginoon. Ang pangako ng Panginoon, He will lift you up in due time. He will lift you up. Itataas ka niya sa takdang oras ng Diyos. I-restore ka niya sa takdang oras ng Panginoon. Brethren, there is a promise of exaltation by God in due time. So nakita niyo po yung difference. The world wants to feed your pride, to feed your pride because you want self-glory. Okay? Pero yung opposite, you humble yourself, you humble yourself and let God promote you. Let God bless you. Let God be the one to restore to you what the, the things that you lost. Let God be the one to lift you up and exalt you in due time. This is how beautiful and how worthy God is. However, there is no true exaltation from this world because this world is under the wrath of God. True exaltation is not by being friends with the world, but by humbling ourselves before the Lord, accepting His discipline, accepting His sanctification. And there is a promise of exaltation by God in due time. God is opposed to the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. He gives favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, before the Lord, that He may lift you up in due time. Amen? Let's all rise, brothers and sisters. Let's thank the Lord for His word today. Salamat po, Panginoon. Meron po tayo nga awaiting uh, song before po tayo mag-end sa panalangin. Let's just sing this song to the Lord. I hope you remember this song, but we will sing it so we can sing it with us.
sense that the Lord is speaking to particular persons in our midst. And the Lord is telling you this. I'm your fountain. I'm your fountain. I'm your living water, anak. I'm the one who will satisfy you with springs of living water flowing in your heart. I am your fountain. Why do you want to be satisfied by the world? Mga kapatid sa mga sandali pong ito, kung kinakausap tayo ng Panginoon, dumapit po tayo sa Panginoon sa mga sandaling ito at tayo po ay Pagsisihan po natin ang atin pong ginawa sa Panginoon. Humingi po tayo ng kanyang forgiveness. Isuko po natin sa Panginoon ang atin pong worldliness. Ihingi po natin ang tawad sa Panginoon ang atin pong attraction sa world. And let's ask the Lord that by faith, truly, we believe that it is the Lord alone who will lift us up in due time. It is the Lord alone who will supply us with every grace we need. He will supply us with every strength, with every resource we need. Brethren, come before the Lord. Just you and the Lord right now. I will not lead in prayer, but draw near to the Lord right now. We will have a moment of silence. Just speak to the Lord. Draw near to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. O Diyos, kayo po ang mahabagin na Diyos. Kayo po ang mahabagin, mabuti, mapagpatawad, na ama namin na nasa langit. At ngayon pong umagang ito, alam po namin, Panginoon, na kumilos po kayo. Alam po namin, nangusap kayo sa aming mga puso. Salamat, Panginoon. O Jesus, patuloy po namin na pinupuri at pinasasalamatan ng inyong pong banal na pangalan. Hinayaan niyong marinig namin ang inyong mensahe ngayon upang kami po ay hindi po 
tumuloy sa pagkakalin lang Panginoon ng pagiging makamundo. Patuloy po ninyo Panginoon na pakalinisin, pakadalisayin Panginoon ang inyo pong church. Patuloy po ninyo Panginoon, O oh God, na irin nyo po kami, i-revive nyo po kami Panginoon. Lord, hiniling namin ang patuloy ninyong grasya at awa sa aming pong henerasyon. Lord, these are difficult times as your word says. Protect us, Father God. Preserve your church. Preserve, Lord, your elect. Preserve, Lord, your beloved ones, Father God. We pray, Father in heaven. Lord God, that you will increase our faith and you will increase, Lord God, the grace in our hearts. We thank you for your word today. Truly, Lord Jesus, there is a fountain who is the king, victorious warrior, and Lord of everything. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. We commit to you, Lord Jesus, the rest of this week. We continue to pray that you will bless us in our endeavors, bless the work of our hands. Lord Jesus, that you alone will be magnified as you walk with us in all our challenges and difficulties. May the world see, O oh God, may the world see that our God is alive. Our God is faithful, our God restores. Maraming marami pong salamat. You are faithful to your people. You are faithful, O Lord God, to your church. You are faithful to those, O God, who humble themselves, Lord God, before you. Maraming marami pong salamat. We give you thanks and praises, Father God. Lord Jesus, pinapanalangin namin ang aming mga tahanan, Panginoon, as we celebrate Mother's Day today, Father God, with our with our families, Lord Jesus, or as we spend Sunday today, Lord, may we continue to abide in your love. Use us, Father God, in our workplaces. Use us in our neighborhood. Use us wherever you have put us, Lord, to always tell others about the grace of God through Christ. Maraming marami pong salamat. And as we give to you, Lord Jesus, our tithes, our offerings, Lord, thank you. We give them to you, Lord, with cheerful hearts. Thanking you, Lord God, for all your blessed and loving provisions for all of us. May you continue to use these things, Jesus, for the furtherance of the gospel. Marami pong salamat. We love you, we praise you, and we are careful to give to you back all the praises and the glory in Jesus most mighty and sweet and satisfying name we pray amen and amen, amen. muli happy mothers day po muli god bless you to god be the glory praise the father praise the son